In today's episode, we talk the Dolphin, Hilton Lake Buena Vista, Nomad Lounge, and a whole lot more. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. You are listening to the Main Street Magic Podcast with your hosts, Jeremy Stein and John Marone. Hello and welcome to another episode of Main Street Magic. I am your host, Jeremy Stein, and I am joined by my co-host, John Marone. How you doing? In today's episode, we're going to share our latest trip review. Please check us out on the web at MainSTMagic.com, as well as like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at MainSTMagic. If you like coffee and you love Disney, then you have to go to ExpeditionRoasters.com and check out their themed coffees. Not only are their coffees delicious, they are packaging and flavoring them based off of your favorite Disney attractions. So they have flavors like Skipper's Brew, Jungle Banana Pie, Roundup Roast, Campfire S'mores, and Enchanted Tiki Coconut, plus many, many more. You can use Main Street Magic 20 at checkout to receive 20% off your first order. So John, where are you at right now? I am in... Columbus, Mississippi, which if you're not familiar with that is, I'm is not. maybe tw- it's yeah, well, I'm haven't been either. So it's about <laughs> 20 miles east of Starkville, um, which is where Mississippi State University is. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so I've done a good tour of North Alabama and North Mississippi. And the best news about it was um, today I actually saw the sun. Oh, there you go. So for two days, it's been nothing but dreariness and rain. And today I uh, did a meeting. I left the meeting. It was raining. I got in my car. It was 50 degrees. I drove to another city, did a meeting, got out of my car in the afternoon. It was sunny and 77 and no rain. And I was probably about three hours apart. Nice. Not bad. Yeah, I got sunburn walking the dog yesterday. So we've... We've, uh, you're you're going to come back to uh, summer, obviously, here, as, as as I think we experienced a little bit last weekend when we were in Disney. Um, it we was did. Warmer it was warmer than a bit normal. That, yeah, that, those 80s were a, uh, a not a uh, usual February uh, occurrence. No, no, not at all. Um, so, th- yeah, so this past weekend was one of those interesting weekends where we didn't, we didn't specifically – a line to to for both of our families to be at Disney, but we happened to be there. Um, it was one of those rare weekends as well that I think um, we never even got to see each other uh, because our plans were were so different from yours. And we thought maybe we we might get a chance to meet up one day at Magic Kingdom, but again, the stars just didn't align. Uh, but wanted to run through. Uh, as we do always after we come back from these trips, uh, things that you experienced, things that that me and my family experienced, um, and hopefully just give some information on the types of things we did. So where did you guys stay for this trip? So we stayed at the Hilton Lake Buena Vista. And okay. I did, so even though I'm a Hilton member, I, I actually booked this one for cash. Okay. Um, I don't, I think when I looked at moderates, there was nothing available for this weekend. And one of the re- reasons also for um, you and I, for our children, Monday was a ho- kids were off school for President's Day. Yeah. Um, so normally on this type of weekend, we would go down on Friday. We went Saturday because the kids had a basketball game. Um, I think they already had their heads in Disney because they <laughs> lost They lost 48 to 14. So. Oh. Uh, it was a one, it was a wonderful 9:30 a.m. Saturday um, basketball game. Yeah, but yeah, when we drove down, we actually we surprised our daughter by taking her to American Girl. Um, so that was part of our Saturday before, and then from there, um, we went and checked into the hotel. So we stayed. That's where we stayed um, for our weekend. How about you guys? So ours, ours was a little bit different. We had, we had looked months ago at doing the same thing. We thought we would head down Friday. We'd come home Monday. Um, there weren't really any great deals that that we saw available. So we kind of just kept putting it off. And then knowing that we're going, um, next month in March, uh, from a Monday through a Friday for spring break, 
we kind of thought, you know what, maybe let's save some of that money that we would normally spend three nights on at a hotel, uh, and let's just apply that to March um, when we go down for, for spring break. Uh, so what we actually did, we headed down Saturday uh, morning as well, uh, a little bit before you guys did, and uh, that evening we left and we went to a friend's house that they live in Oviedo, which is uh, maybe 30, 45 minutes from Disney. Um, so we went and decided to stay with them. Uh, Sunday, as we were wrapping up our day and our plan was to drive home, um, it was getting about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the Magic Kingdom, and Rhonda just happened to look at me and say, I wonder if there's any hotels available tonight, because uh, she didn't have to work until noon on Monday. Um, so opened up uh, uh, the, the My Disney Experience app and, and started looking around to see if there were any sort of hotels. Uh, nothing was popping up. And we decided to hop on Small World, and I just went to Priceline out of curiosity, started looking around, and wouldn't you know, um, a room at the Dolphin shows up uh, for about one, I want to say it was $179 uh, prior to the resort fee. Um, so when I went ahead and clicked just to see what the total would be uh, with resort fee and uh, all sorts of taxes, it was going to be 210 all in. Um, and so we went ahead and booked it while I was sitting there on Small World, which does not have great Wi-Fi. So I'm like clicking, hoping that I'm getting through, that I don't lose it, and also hoping I don't book like eight rooms, you know, every time I'm, I'm clicking submit. <laughs> so, so that, yeah, that's what we ended up doing. Um, so I, I can get into our thoughts of that, uh, you know, a little bit, but how was, how was the Hilton? I mean, I know you guys have stayed there before. We stayed there once last year. Um, I know this is one of those Disney Springs local hotels that now get some of those advantages with the fast passes uh, and some of the extra magic hours. Um, you, you guys enjoy this place, right? Yeah. So for Hilton, there's actually there for Ho Hotel Boulevard or Lake Buena Vista hotels. There's actually three that fall under Hilton properties. So there's the Hilton Lake Buena Vista which is right across from Disney Springs. Uh -huh. Across the street from that is the Hilton Buena Vista Palace. Mm -hmm. And then down at the end, which will be closer to the entrance of Disney, which that's, um, gosh, I forget what that road is over there, but there's a double tree. Mm -hmm. So we stayed at um, this one, which the Buena Vista Palace has undergone a big refurb, new pool area, rooms redone, very nice. But this time we stayed here, which is a little bit of the older complex. So, okay. you know, there's two pools and they're just big, giant rectangles, nothing special about them. Um, and that, so, I mean, I did it mainly just for price. Yeah. Um, you know, staying there, but yeah, we, you know, we had a room, I get free breakfast there in the, um, in a special area, which is a full breakfast, a buffet with eggs and bacon and everything. And it's easy for us to just cross the street and head to, uh, Disney Springs. And I'll talk about transportation into the parks here in a bit. But one of the things that, again, to get fast passes for any of those resorts, you must book through Disney travel. Yeah. And it's got to right. be a package, so, correct? Yeah, it has to be a package. So I don't have that. But this is, up until recently, this was the only hotel that allowed you to take advantage of extra magic hours that was not a Disney hotel. Okay. Or Swan and Dolphin. Um, but what they do now is they give you a card. So she asked me when I checked in, said, will you be going to the parks? I said, yeah. She said, will you take advantage of extra magic hours? I said, sure. So she wrote me out these cards which I guess you just show them to um, the representative at Disney to get the magic hours, but they put a date on them that when ah. this card expires by. Okay. So in the past, I used to just use, uh, you know, use a Hilton room key, show it, and I'd get extra magic hours. Right. You know, they never looked at it. Um, but the good thing that she did is she put my expiration date for the magic hours as January 19th. 19 oh wow okay that's awesome so yeah so now the weekend's over i still have my passes if i ever stay somewhere else that doesn't have the extra magic hours. yeah or you could maybe just put them up on ebay and make a couple bucks 
Who knows? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go back um, when you were talking about breakfast, was that included breakfast part of you being a Hilton Rewards member or is that something yes. that is normally included? Okay. All right. No, that's – yeah, so that's being a rewards member. Nice. I like that. Um, okay, so talk about transportation then. Um, we know – because when we were when we were driving out uh, Monday, by the time we left, and we were driving on I-4 uh, very slowly, as we always do, <laughs> I looked over and I noticed um, – the B Resort, the Holiday Inn, the Double Tree, and their proximity seemed much further from Disney Springs than I had, I think, initially imagined. And I was wondering what even those locations were like trying to walk to Disney Springs. Um, but you're able to walk from where you were, and then obviously they have their own transportation, which will take you to the parks. Yeah, so our first night when we got there, we walked over to Disney Springs. So now... I mean, it's always been an easy walk because you just go to the corner and cross the street. But yeah. now that they have the um, walkways over the road, right, you don't have to wait for any traffic signals or anything. So, it, you know, the one walkway, the staircase or the elevator up to it is right on that Hilton property. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you just walk past the, you know, out your room, out the building, past the pools, and you're, you know, down the walkway and here you are, you're crossing the road. So it's real convenient if you want to walk over to Disney Springs. Nice. Now, your transportation options, you have plenty, right? If you drive your own car, you can use your car. If you want to use the bus service, that the Hotel Plaza Boulevard resorts do have buses, but realize that you're going to stop at multiple locations yeah and it doesn't you know they run pretty decent there's very rarely at that hilton that if i don't see a bus pulling in or pulling out so usually you know it's not too bad but you know you deal with the crowds and no different if you're going to you know magic kingdom it takes you to the bus stop at ticket and transportation yeah Perfect. right it doesn't take it doesn't take you all the way to disney um, you can walk over to Disney Springs and hop on a Disney bus if you want, or you can take a Lyft or an Uber. So when we went on Sunday to Magic Kingdom, that's what we did. I hopped, I looked at Uber and I pulled it up and from that hotel to the contemporary. So I took, I would either take an Uber or Lyft to the contemporary and just walk across the street to the Magic Kingdom. Right. Right. Because they can't pull into that parking there. Um, even though a minivan can't. So you just have them drop you off at the contemporary. So an Uber was about 20 bucks in that. So then I went okay. to the Lyft app and it was like $11. Oh, wow. Um, so I just booked the Lyft. Car came, clean, picked us up. And four of us went there. They pulled in the contemporary. We hopped out, crossed the street. I think there were two people in front of us to go through security because security there is on the sidewalk. Yep. Um, and then once you're through security, you walk right in. You don't have to go, you know, you don't deal with the same security as the monorail or the ferry boat individuals. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, you know, we did that and that was an easy, um, easy drive. And, you know, what to me, well worth 11 bucks. Oh, definitely. And one of the things I was looking at uh, recently, because I was uh, just looking at the Uber pickup and drop off locations. Um, if you need to specifically tell, and it's probably the same for Lyft, specifically tell them you want to go to the Contemporary, uh, because otherwise, from what I could tell, if you just say you want to go to Magic Kingdom, they're going to drop you off over at the TTC, and then you're going to have to, um, you know, take the normal monorail or the ferry boat over. Uh, so one thing, yeah, if, if you're using Lyft or Uber to get to Magic Kingdom, just tell them you're going to Contemporary. You know, don't don't tell them you're going to the Magic Kingdom or you're going to get dropped off uh, across the water there. And then you got to deal with the monorail or the um, uh, ferry boat, which which we ended up having to do. So we um, we spent Saturday. We went straight to Animal Kingdom. Um, a couple weeks ago, I saw on one of the Disney Facebook groups that I'm in that a whole bunch of flight of passage fast passes had opened up, uh, for that Saturday. And I went in and was able to, I think we had Navi river journey. I went in and immediately switched and we got like a nine fifteen AM, um, flight of passage fast pass, which was crazy, um, to get something only a few weeks before. So, uh, we went straight to Animal Kingdom on Saturday, and, and that's what we did. We were pretty much just revolving that day around being able to do Flight of Passage, um, which was outstanding. 
as always. Um, now, what uh, Saturday you said you guys ended up at, at Disney Springs. Did you guys eat over there? We did. So when we did Disney Springs, we went over there and um, just walking around, trying to figure out. I mean, we weren't starving, but we were looking for something. So we ended up at a f- favorite place, Morimoto. But this time we decided we'd have the uh, Morimoto street food and yeah. sit outside. So, you know, I went and ordered and obviously they have the sticky ribs there. They used to have the bao buns, the steamed buns, but those were not on the menu. Yeah. Um, it seemed like every person who was ordering ahead of me was getting one of the uh, noodle bowls. Yeah, we had um, one of those they, when we were there. Man, they are they, they look, they're big. They're huge. Yeah, yep. for like 11 bucks or yeah. whatever. I mean, I, I looked at that, and in the future, if I was hungry, I would definitely get it. Oh, I mean, yeah. It, yeah, it looked good. So we got two orders of sticky ribs, so the ribs are three, you know, three ribs per order. And then they had a special that night, which was um, sliders. But oh. two sliders, beef and pork um, for the meat, the bun with like an Asian slaw and sauce on it. And they were amazing. And the slider was big. So it wasn't, it, it was thick. So even though it's on a slider bun, I mean, it was I, hard to say, but uh, you know, it was a good inch thick patty yeah. for that juicy, flavorful, really good. Um, for drinks, you know, my wife said, you know, just give me some kind of light beer. And then, um, you know, they say that they, so Kieran on draft, right? Uh-huh. Japanese beer on draft. I asked them and they're like, we don't have any drafts. I'm like, well, okay. They have craft beers in cans. Yeah. But I, like 16 I looked ounce at them. cans or something, aren't they? Aren't they yeah. larger? Yeah. Yeah. It, but there was nothing there that I, she was sitting at a table with the kids and I'm like, there's nothing here I want to take a chance on because I, other than a straight full bodied Sam Adams, I didn't recognize any of the other beers. Yep. And I usually pay attention to craft beers. Yeah. But what they did have was they had a, um, vodka slush. So it was vodka, lemonade and uzu, oh, which is okay. kind of, kind of a citrus. And so I said, I'll, I'll take that. And they're like, well, it's not mixed with the vodka. We poured a vodka in. And I'm like, whatever, that's fine. <laughs> Give so, me a spoon. <laughs> yeah. So they poured the vodka in, put the slush, and then, you know, kind of mixed it up. And, I, you know, I always worry because stuff like that, if it's too sweet, my wife's not going to like it. But yeah. it was a big full cup, and she loved it. And I loved it as well. I mean, it was well worth it. So. You know, kids being kids, they weren't going to eat anything because my kids are pickiest eaters ever. I did look at possibly, I'm like, well, I could do mobile ordering for Deluxe Burger. But they're like, nah, we kind of don't want anything. Yeah. Um, so I didn't bother with it. But it, it was interesting because we got to Disney Springs, I'd say it was about 530. Okay. And it wasn't very crowded at all. By the time we finished eating, and we had walked around a little before that, and, you know, the sun had gone down. I, it was packed. Oh, I'm yeah. like, where, where did all these people come yeah. from? <laughs> so then, but but your wait, you didn't have to wait very long to order and get your food? Because when we went, we did that, I think it was back in maybe December. Now, it was probably 7.30 or so at night or maybe even 8 o'clock by the time we went. I swear it was 30 to 40 minutes that we stood in line. Um, and then, of course, all the food is ready to go, and they're pretty much just pulling it right out of a hot pan. But we waited forever to get the food and the line in the service seemed to move very, very slow. Um, when we were there. Yeah. So I'll say it isn't the fastest place. So I was probably maybe six to seventh in line. Okay. And so I was through it in 10 minutes. You know, the big thing is there's not a lot of seating there. So if you get a table, congratulations. Yeah. Um, you know, otherwise you're just, you have your food and you got no place to sit with it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, you know, to me, it was they only have one register, and so they have one person down at the end of the counter who kind of talks to you and says, what are you having? And then they'll put it together, slide it down, and then the person at the register will ring it up, but also take your drink orders there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So and and it's still. I mean, again, even even that night that we waited when it was so busy. I mean, there's we had no shot of getting into Morimoto because we didn't have reservations. So still. Even though for us we had to wait in line a little bit, and we there were some people that had just gotten there, uh, they just drove from like Ohio or something, and they were in front of us in line, and we talked to them, so it, it was it was fine. We didn't mind waiting, um, but it's still such a great alternative, you know, if you don't have reservations at Morimoto uh, and you still want to eat there, or you just want to, you know, kind of sit outside, and all you're looking for is the sticky ribs because uh, they don't have obviously a full full menu. Um, I think it's still such a great spot to go. So. Yeah. So then I did ask about Tables in Wonderland, and they said we only take it until 4 or 4.30. Really? Yeah. That's weird. So I guess you can use it for lunch, but you can't use it for dinner. Okay. Well, that's that's still very good to know, though. I, yeah. I don't remember if we even asked that night. Um, we, we probably didn't because I don't remember them telling us that, that you know they only took it till that certain time so that's pretty interesting yeah um so uh, i'll wrap up my disney springs and we'll hear about your guys at, at animal kingdom so we um you know then we walked around i wanted michelle to see some of the stuff that you and i had seen um when we had our mandate yeah um so i took her and the kids down into enzo's hideaway just uh-huh. to show her and she thought it was neat just the fact that you go down the staircase the way it looks and that and it there there were some people who were waiting to be um, seated, but I wouldn't say capacity was 100%. Okay. The, the bar area was crowded, but there was probably, maybe there were three groups waiting to be seated, and I'd say maybe there was eight open tables. So okay. we, you could have got in there if you wanted to, to eat, with, possibly without a reservation. Yeah. Um, from there, I then we then went back upstairs and showed her the regular full blown restaurant where, you know, it's, to me, it's interesting that you could just, you can walk in there, bypass the check-in desk and you could really just walk to the railing and overlook the whole dining room. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so we looked at that and then we walked next door into the Edison, which again, we bypassed right now. The Edison had some ropes up, you know, to kind of control the people, but we walked right past it, walked right past the check-in desk and walked all the way down to the to the staircase so that she can see everything and her comment was this looks awesome we got to get the babysitters and get in here after 10 yeah yeah um you know when we were talking about so when we left there was we talked to the girl who was the hostess and my wife just asked said you know do you guys charge a cover charge for after 10 and she said not yet okay so i I thought that was an interesting yeah yeah, I thought it was an interesting answer, um, but it was pretty much no, not right now, but who knows? You know, maybe in the future. Yeah, and I then there was see that. Yeah, and then there was one of, I guess, a gentleman there who must, looked like he was one of the managers, and he's like, yeah, no, you know, my wife said, well, do you need reservations, right? And he's like, no, just come in. He's like, yeah, you know, if you get here early, that's fine. Um, if you get here late, you can still get in but he's like there's great entertainment and if you're gonna come come on a friday or a saturday because that's when all the best acts are here okay so you know obviously catering to the bigger crowds right you're wednesday night you're not gonna have the best there but he's like friday and saturday he's like the place is great wonderful acts you'll have a good time awesome um and that was it i mean we walked around and you know i my wife spent 40 minutes in Lily Pulitzer. Um, <laughs> that's another story. Yeah. Though we need a, though, though Disney Springs needs a Tory Burch. So this is for, this is a tip for the gentleman who listened to this podcast. Okay. If your wife is a shopper or even if she's not, if you want her to shop, get her interested in Tory Burch. Yes. It's high end. It's more expensive items. But when you go in there, as a they you're just sitting around right your wife shopping they will offer you beer nice so they're just they have coronas in these like little bottles so i could just go in there and sit there while she shops and i have a beer or two next thing i know who knows how much the bill is right <laughs> yeah. work, right it works in their favor yeah but they need that at disney springs because then Definitely. at least if i'm waiting 40 minutes i could get myself a 
a uh, so-called free beer. So. Yeah, yeah. So, do they check and make sure you have a wife or a significant other with you? Do you think I could just walk in know. there on my own? Maybe I'll try that next week when I'm there. I'll just yeah, go just, in on my own and just sit for a while just, and be like, "Yeah, yeah my wife just, has been here forever. You got anything to drink? I could try that." Just follow somebody in who's not with <laughs> a husband or a partner of that. Oh man! Just kind of follow right behind them and just say, "Gosh, I this is a great store." And, you know, she'll look at you a little weird and just let her go one way and just mumble, yeah, I'm going to head this way. I like that. And then that. You'll, they'll, think, they'll think you're together. Yeah, you'll see, be fine. Here we are. We're helping people out. That's perfect. Yes, we are. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So that was it. I mean, we walked around and uh, headed back over the, the walkway and back to the, the Hilton Lake Buena Vista, and we were, we were done for the night. For the, so that was our Saturday. Yeah, that's that's great though. I mean, those those are some of the like the non park days. Sometimes I think are the best, especially. I know you guys got there a little bit later, you know, to the hotel after going to the you know American Girl and um, enjoying all that that was. Um, you know, that I just I think some of those days are the best. That's what we had done when we stayed at that at the Hilton Lake Buena Vista the time we went one night, and it's just the best. I mean, just wandering around Disney Springs, um, grabbing. Grabbing something to eat, grabbing something to drink, seeing some of the you know street entertainment and and all of those things, and, and checking out all these new places is just awesome. Um, it yeah, it's getting more and more where we hit Disney Springs every trip. Yeah, yeah, and it used to be like this afterthought. You know, it it, it was it, it always felt like before, even on short weekends, you just didn't have time to go to Disney Springs, and now. Um, yeah, like you guys, I mean, often we will make time, um, especially just for the food alone, because I, I mean, I still think some of the best food is at Disney Springs, you know, without having to really go out of your way over to Animal Kingdom Lodge and, and go somewhere like Sanaa. Um, yeah, I, th- I think, uh, I think that's the way to go. Um, and, and our, our highlight of Saturday, I mean, obviously other than getting to ride Flight of Passage again, which we love. Um, was we went to Nomad Lounge. Uh, so we had, we got down about nine fifteen. We walked in. We did our flight of passage. We went over and did um, dinosaur, and we did Kilimanjaro, and uh, a few other things. It was getting pretty hot, and Rhonda and the kids just wanted to find a place to sit and relax for a while. Like that's all they wanted to do. They wanted to get something to eat and just relax. Um, and I'm thinking, all right, well, there's not really a lot of choices at Animal Kingdom to really just sit for, I feel like, an extended period of time and relax, you know, if you're going to eat. Um, so I thought, well, Nomad Lounge might be perfect. They've got indoor, they've got outdoor. So we headed over there. Uh, it was probably about one o'clock. It was a little bit busy, but we found a spot outside. Um, and outside there is so perfect. Even though it was a hot day, it was cool out there under the covered patio. Um, and we found a wraparound couch, uh, with coffee table that we could just sit at and, you know, waitress would, would come to us, take our orders. Um, so Rhonda had a glass of wine. Um, I ordered, uh, Jenna's tattoo, which is a watermelon drink with vodka. Um, it was, it was good, but like you were just saying with, with the slushy that you guys had, sometimes those things become overly sweet. Um, so this one was it was almost hard to drink after a little bit because it was just, it was so sweet, uh, like almost starting to hurt my stomach. But the first couple sips were very, very good and refreshing. Um, so the, the kids got the, the, they do have a full kids menu there, uh, with pasta and, and chicken fingers and hamburgers and your normal restaurant fare for kids. Um, and then they have their own small plate menu for nomad lounge specifically, but what you can also do is they're going to hand you the Tiffin's menu and you can order anything off of the appetizer list for Tiffin's. Uh, you cannot order the entrees, but the appetizers will give you probably another half dozen selections that aren't on the actual Nomad Lounge menu. So you have a really, really good variety of probably over a dozen or so uh, different small plates and appetizers. So we went with the bread service, which I had had uh, last month when I was there by myself. Um, and I just, I wanted Rhonda to try it because of that baba ganoush, uh, which tastes to me like Spaceship Earth smells. And she agreed completely. As um, soon as she took a bite, she was just like, yep, you were right. This tastes like Spaceship Earth. Uh, so we had that. We ordered the tuna. Um, 
which was easily probably the best tuna I've ever had anywhere. And it had a um, like a kind of a thick peppercorn crust, uh, ponzu sauce, and then shishito peppers, which just have just enough heat if you get a little slice of pepper with each piece of tuna. Um, now, it's 14 bucks. You get four pieces, but it was well worth it. It was nice and warm on the outside where they had seared it, and then the inside was just perfectly raw and still cool. Uh, and it just, I mean, it melted in your mouth like butter. Literally one of the best things I've had. Like this will go up with my uh, bacon and eggs appetizer, I think, is, is some of my favorites. Um, and then after we finished those, we were we were still kind of hungry because um, it was really all we had eaten so far that day. So we ordered uh, their pork ribs. Now here for 10 bucks, so same price as Morimoto, you get four ribs. Uh, same size as Morimoto as far as the ribs go, so nice, big, meaty ribs. Uh, but these have a honey glaze with um, coriander spice on them. So they're not quite as sweet as the Morimoto ribs. They're definitely not as good. But if you're at Nomad Lounge and you like the Morimoto ribs, I would, I would highly, highly suggest um, that you get these ribs. And again, you're going to get four of them for 10 bucks as opposed to the three that you get over at Morimoto. And then uh, as we were flipping through again the menu to see if there was anything else we wanted, uh, Rhonda saw a lotus blossom drink, which has a little floating uh, lotus flower in it that's made of plastic, and it's got a light inside. And we've slowly started to collect these. Um, I think it was, uh, I can't remember, was it my birthday at Flying Fish that I ordered something and they brought me that um, light up ice cube? Or was that when we right. ate at the Wave? I can't remember which one it was. Um, but we've kind of started just collecting these. So as soon as she saw that, she's like, well, Jeremy, you need to order it and, and drink that so that I can have the lotus flower. And I was like, all right, you twisted my arm. Um, but this was really good. It had a ginger beer in it. Uh, it, was, it was similar to a Moscow Mule, but a little bit more citrus based, um, almost like a little bit more orange flavor. Uh, so that was very, very good. And uh, they do take tables in Wonderland there. So we saved a good 20% off the food and drink. Um, it, it adds up quick, though. I mean, you know, we had three appetizers. The kids split a meal. I think Rhonda had two glasses of wine. I had the two drinks. Uh, and after tables, which, of course, includes the 18% gratuity, we were at $104. Um, and then we slipped her another $10 bill because the waitress was outstanding. Um, and I'll, I'll go back to something that you know Rhonda and I talk about a lot is we made sure we we called the waitress by name she's wearing the name tag and we she was busy out there I think it was her and one other waitress covering the entire outdoor area so she was really busy running around but we noticed a difference in the time she spent with us and kind of the service she gave us than a lot of the other surrounding tables uh, I don't know if that's because we we called her by name and, and we were very, very friendly to her and she kind of saw that we were just there to relax and, you know, we weren't we weren't like rushing her or pressing her for the next thing we wanted. Um, but but I thought it kind of made a difference. So I still I still stand by you call a cast member by their name and they'll often perk up a little bit more and potentially treat you a little bit better or even give you better service. Um, so I, I think it's something worth trying. And then uh, we, we wrapped up there about three or so and decided to head over to the character warehouse because uh, it was going to be on the way to our friends. And Rhonda had been there with the girls before. It was my first time. Um, and you want to talk like kid in a candy store? That place is awesome. <laughs> uh, I mean, absolutely. Like we, we, we spent more than we probably should have, but I got... I mean, like I got I got a Star Wars shirt that I had seen in the parks for months and I just could never bring myself to buy it for 30 bucks. I didn't want it that bad. Ten bucks there. Um, I got a, I got a new book bag. We've been looking for a new park bag because our old one was starting to get a little worn out. You know, again, the, the price that they have on the tag is like forty two ninety nine. We got that for 20 bucks. Um, Rana got a bunch of shirts. The kids got shirts. I mean. When I looked at everything, I think total we spent about $170. Ticket price originally, which would have been in the parks, I bet would have hit close to 400 or so. Um, so. So it's definitely an area that I would recommend stopping by You know, for people that have the time. Um, definitely work in an extra 10 or 15 minutes to find a parking spot because that place is a nightmare as far as parking goes. Like 
if if they needed, you know, X number of parking spots, I feel like they only put in about a third of that. Um, so it's yeah, that that part I would I would plan a little extra for, and that whole place is just a madhouse. Um, it was it was nuts, but it was worth the stop. Yeah, so you know the, when they expanded that. So we're talking about the uh, Disney Character Warehouse outlet. It's at the uh, Lake Buena Vista outlets. Yep. That which is you know across I four and, and just down. So you know it's five five minutes or that with uh, no traffic. With traffic, it maybe takes you ten minutes to get there. Yeah. Um, when they expanded the outlet, they built a big parking garage in the back. So ah. um, that took away a lot of parking there, but there was a parking garage behind it that helped. So I've been going there for, gosh, ages. I mean, probably 15 years at, at least. Now, we used to be lucky because where you and I live, we have two outlets close to our house in St. Augustine. There used to be a Disney one in yeah. there. Yep. Um, and then they closed because – and. When I've been out to um, California, there was there's a Disney character outlet that wasn't too far from Disneyland um, that I used to drive to and go to. Now, this last time, I don't remember if it's still open or not, but we didn't go to it. Um, but yeah, you can you can go there and you can oftentimes find deals. I I went and I stopped there. When you and I got together and I was there for the NFL Pro Bowl experience, mm-hmm. I stopped at the outlet and walked through. And there were a couple things that I probably could have bought, and then I just bailed on them. Yeah. Um, the, that store is a zoo, and you get through it, but then you, the, the line is a queue just like <laughs> – <laughs> You're oh, waiting yeah. for a ride. No doubt. And <laughs> and it was fun. Like we saw there was a family there. Um I don't know how many of their of them there were, but they had like their kids uh sectioned over in a corner with like eight bat of the baskets filled with stuff. And then the mom would come around and she'd like send another kid out and she was like, Well, we need to get, you know, Uncle Billy uh, a shirt, so you go find one for him and then they'd bring it back and then she'd like send another kid out and I, I just I mean they had all these baskets filled with stuff. Um and it, it appeared it could be pretty hit or miss, you know, especially with when it comes down to sizing. Uh luckily they didn't have my size in a couple of things because I would have easily bought half a dozen more t-shirts at ten dollars each um but they just didn't have my size so i didn't bother uh great place to get coffee mugs disney coffee mugs because in a park they're so overpriced i think most of them there were maybe 6.99 or 7.99 as opposed to sometimes you know between 13.99 and 17.99 in the park um and then, like, Kalen picked up uh, some holiday uh, Mickey ears that normally in the park are probably $14, $15. Bucks. She got them for $2. Um, she got an iPad case for, like, 10 bucks. that's normally $30. Uh, so the markdowns are pretty good, and it was a really good place. Uh, they had all of the stuff from Food and Wine Fest last year. So they had several shirts, men and women's. They had the posters, um, a bunch of different keepsakes. So if you don't want to pay potentially full price for some of the festival merchandise, I bet you could go not too long after and find a lot of it at the character warehouse uh, and save a whole lot of money. So, um, it, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 we, I will be back. We will definitely be back. Um, we might just have to leave our wallets in the car or something. It, it's a good place to go after holidays yeah. because they get all the excess merchandise it's just obviously you want to hope that they have stuff that doesn't have a year on it. Of course. Um, yeah. You know, so right now there is a ton of stuff in there with 2017, Yeah. It, you know, on it. I, I was in there when I was in there last time. There was something in there with like 2015. Oh. <laughs> um, you'll, you'll sometimes find merchandise from Disney Cruise Line in there. Okay. And there will be periods of time where they'll also have some Disneyland items in there as well. Oh, nice. Um, so you do have to look around and kind of hunt and pack, but as you said, uh, a lot of shirts, um, a lot of different types of bags, toys in that are always hit or miss. Sometimes yeah. there's stuff, sometimes there's not. Um, but then there's, uh, it, you know, as the coffee mugs and, um, home goods, there tends to be a, a decent amount. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. 
So um so Sunday you guys ended up heading to the Magic Kingdom. Um we did not end up crossing paths there because I know you guys ended up heading to Epcot. How how did your Sunday yeah. look? Yeah, so when we got dropped off the contemporary, went there, we went straight to the firehouse and um I had been telling Gavin for a while. I, I've I've played Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom before when it started, but for Every time I'd go to the park, I'd occasionally just go in and I'd say I wanted to play, and I'd grab the cards because the kids like to look at the characters yeah. and have the cards. Oh, yeah, they're great so I had this, Yeah, and it doesn't cost anything, right, other than the fact that you're admission. So it's not an extra add-on charge. Right. I, um, you know, I know what you're going to talk about with it as well, but I had gone on – my son has Star Wars trading cards – you know, I have baseball cards from the past and all that. So I just I had gone on Amazon um, maybe a month or two months ago and found these just uh, card holders. They uh-huh. they hold they, they're not overly big. So oftentimes you get the card holders which are plastic sleeves and there's nine cards per page. Yep. Right. So they're big. I found little books. And there are four cards per page. Oh, perfect. So something simple that would just fit in the backpack. And, right, I could put a card on each side. So each page is eight cards, four in the front, four in the back. Yeah. So I had put all, all the sorcerer cards in there, threw it in the backpack, and know now whenever we go, I have them with me. But I had my son and daughter, they both wanted to do it. So we got in line for the firehouse, went in there. And got them signed up for the first time. And they each get a deck of cards. I don't know how they match up. If, if when they do it, if it looks at their band, because it, it does it with the magic band. There's a little keyhole. You hold your band up, and that's what gets everything started. Yeah. So for the two, we had to pick one. So I picked my son because he had been wanting to do this for a while. So we were... And I don't know on yours, but we had fast passes this day for Peter Pan, Thunder Mountain, and Pirates. And so all of our our stuff for Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom was Adventureland. Mm-hmm. So that's where we went and played that the game for that day. So for Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, you get a card in the firehouse. They show you, if you've never played before, how to do it. And you hold your magic band up to a little keyhole at a predetermined window. A, a picture comes up, a video. You read it or listen to it, you know, both. At the end, they cast a spell against you, and you have to hold up your card to defeat the spell. If you dis- defeat the spell, then you, they tell you where you need to go next. I have seen where there's times where you, can't, you don't defeat the spell. Yeah. Yep. Now you'll have to go somewhere else, but you haven't, you know, you're kind of, you're one step, I guess, behind on it. So, um, we, yeah, so we went and did that. I, I was, to them, it was fun. It was something, you know, a little bit different, right? It doesn't take long. All the different windows you go to in Adventureland were all very close. So it wasn't like I was going from one end to the other. Yeah. Um, so it was great to go through with their first level. There is, um, because the more you play and the more you defeat, it gets more difficult. So you need more of the higher level cards, Uh, Okay. but for the kids going through the first time, right, they, they defeat it no matter what they hold up. Um, you know, kind of that first go around, but the more that we go back and they play more, the difficulty is going to ramp up. Okay, um, I gotcha. Yeah, so that there, when the game first started, there was really only one level, but it was built with, I want to say it's built with three different levels um, of difficulty as you go through it. Very cool. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, so we did that. I will say now that the game has been around a while and it's um, some of the videos as you go, you know, the sunlight could affect it. Some of the videos are a little fuzzy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, you know, in the sound, and you're just like, gosh, if this was more of a digital, per, you know, projection, this would be awesome. So there's just, uh, you know, I think there could be a time if they're going to keep it, it could use a refresh. Um, but it's something extra to do and fun. So we did, 
Yeah, we did our we did Peter Pan Fast Pass. We went walked right on Haunted Mansion. And so this was Sunday. The park was supposed to be a nine out of ten for capacity. Yeah. But we got there early. I mean, we were there um, a little bit after nine. It was an early entry day, so they opened at eight. Um, we did, um, let's see, Thunder Mountain. We did Pirates. We did Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. And we also did Dole Whips, but we did it with the mobile ordering because mm-hmm. when we did it clo- about 11 or whatever time, the line was enormous. And so the mobile ordering uh, is just awesome for Dole Whips. The kids each got Dole Whip. Michelle and I tried the new one, which is pineapple upside down cake with Dole Whip on top of it. Oh, yeah. We saw that. Oh, it's a big piece of pineapple upside down cake. But cake was good. Tasted good. A lot of pineapple cherry baked into it with the dole whip on top um i think it's 650 for that versus um maybe five bucks for a dole whip yeah yep so it's not too much more and you get there's a plenty of dole whip on top of it so we did that for magic kingdom and then we we had talked about do we want to go back to the hotel rest for a while and then go to epcot for the last day of Festival of the Arts, and we said, nope, let's just go. We'll go to Epcot, knock that out, and whenever we finish, we finish. Yeah. So we um, we hopped on the monorail um, at Magic Kingdom, took it to TTA, walked over to hop on the Epcot monorail, got on, and right when we got on, I'm like, man, this monorail is stuffy. <laughs> and the doors closed. I should say they should open the door. <laughs> yeah, they should have opened the door. I told my wife, I told Michelle, I'm like, this would be a great day for that door to open up <laughs> and stay open the whole ride. There was no air. <laughs> so we are, so the doors are closed, the monorail's crowded, and they were not moving anywhere. Oh. And there's no air. And then they come on and say, we. We're sorry, we're not going anywhere. We need to shut down and then restart up the computer system. It'll only be a couple minutes. So now, shut down. And I don't know if they're trying to do this to re, you know, get it going, get the air going and everything. Yeah. But Ugh. you're da- they're down a couple minutes. It starts up, shuts back down, starts back up. And I'm like, now people who are standing waiting for the next monorail are just jam packed. I'm like, if they take us off of this one, this is going to be a disaster. Yeah. Um, but, um, they don't, we go on our way sweating the whole way to Epcot. <laughs> oh, man. No air. So, uh, I mean, air never started, um, on it. So we got there, it was hot. And the other thing that's interesting to me is when you get off the monorail at Epcot, you go you go down a ramp, you turn, you go down another ramp. It it was built like there was going to be 40,000 people getting off of a monorail. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? It is I'm like this is the biggest longest walkway. Yeah, and it's like 20 feet wide, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like where what were they expecting? <laughs> uh, we we I mean the monorail's the same size. It hasn't changed since the seventies. Yeah, I mean it's literally the same monorail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean there's there's been different versions of monorails, but it's not like the capacity went from well, a car used to only hold four, but now it right. holds four hundred. Right. Um Yeah. So we got through that. I I did my usual job, got in the, my wife and kids went through the no bag line. I picked the line that could take the longest. So it was the <laughs> shortest line, but it took forever to get through it and then walk through the metal detector uh, yeah. afterwards again. Yeah. Well, I so, always get stuck behind the person that has a book bag with 400 zippers and they haven't unzipped a single one by the time they've made it up to the security check in. You know, like just do everyone a favor and just unzip all of the zippers on your bag or your purse or whatever it is prior to getting up to the security agent and it'll just people will get through so much quicker and they'll be much much more happy with you so that's my little yeah. uh, tip of the day yeah so we um so festival of arts we went for the not 
doing any rides. We weren't worried about rides. Yeah. We were just worried about seeing the art booths and testing out the food. And it, again, I think it was 86 on that day. So Definitely. it was another yep. warm one. Um, you know, whenever a cloud would come around, it was uh, well appreciated. But, you know, for food, we tried, you know, a couple different things. Um, we went. We had one of the booths, and we had the shrimp ceviche with the lime foam on it, uh-huh. and um, loved it. So, and it was plenty. So it was good size, plenty of shrimp in there. Um, so that was really good. My wife also had the sparkling wine with the popping bubbles. Now, that she liked just because she likes those. You know, the in when you think of popping bubbles, they're often used in like the milk teas or, right. the, you know, their tapioca pearls. Yep. Um, so that was good. I just thought the sparkling wine was a little too sweet. But yeah. um, she had that. We went to the Odyssey because I wanted her to try the croissant, the savory croissant donuts. Uh-huh. Um, she loved the chicken salad one. And then I had the tuna one and the one with the uh, different cream cheeses on it. And then between my wife and my daughter and myself, the short ribs at Germany were amazing. And now I had those last time I was there and they just two big chunks of short rib on top of a puree with broccolini and balsamic on it. And, you know, I just told my daughter it was steak and, you know, we ended <laughs> up in cause she loves steak. So she just ate up that meat. I mean, it's just fell apart tender and then we went back and got another plate of it because they were both still hungry on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I missed out on um, that one. Yeah, yeah. So that one was good. And then, um, you know, we went to the American Pavilion because my pickier eater, Gavin, just was going to eat a burger. I got in there. The lines were huge. I did mobile ordering and I had my food. Well, first I got in line because they don't do a good job in the American pavilion of showing that it has mobile ordering. Uh-huh. Right. The sign seems a little smaller, almost hidden, but I, um, yeah, I, I went ahead and did it, uh, did the mobile ordering, saw who I was standing behind and I had my food before they ordered. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mobile order is so awesome. I know. So we used it in, Magic Kingdom and Epcot this time and work both times perfectly. So, um, you know, so that's working great. And then, uh, you know, looked at the different art when we got to, um, my wife had a Schaffenhofer there in Germany. Of course. We, uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, did, you know, saw a couple other things, got to France and had some gelato um, from the ice cream shop there. No slushy. We actually we actually passed on the slushy. Oh. I know. They weren't Shocking. calling your name. They weren't calling you over or anything? They didn't see you? Yeah. You know, I <laughs> I know. It's like John, John, or you they already had it they had it made and everything. Um and then that was it. We uh we left and our, to get back to the Hilton, we left through the International Gateway, through the back entrance, mm-hmm. walked to Beach Club. As I was walking up the pathway towards the beach club lobby, I ordered the lift. We walked through the lobby, got out to the front where the valet and the car park is, and the app showed that they were pulling in through the gate. Perfect. So, yeah, hopped in the car, 12 bucks. I was back to the hotel, and the kids wanted to swim. So we took them swimming and uh, sat by the pool there and had some had some beverages and hung out and it kind of had a uh, good rest of the afternoon and evening. Yeah, that's, that's outstanding. That's how our, our day was similar. Uh, just a little bit after you, we, um, we were going to drive straight from our friend's house. Uh, you know, we knew we were going to drive straight to magic kingdom. Um, of course, I'm just I'm the crazy one that, you know, I mean, I'm up at 6 a.m. no matter what. So at that point I could have gotten in a car and left, but, uh, Kids, kids uh, wanted to stay and, and play a little bit longer, uh, eat some breakfast there. So um, we got out of their house, and we were hoping to be over to Magic Kingdom, I want to say around 10. 
and of course we hit an accident on I-4. It delayed us by probably 30 minutes or so. Um, so I, I'm Rhonda was driving, and I'm just in you know my Disney Experience app, switching fast passes and trying to figure out you know what are we going to do once we get there. And when we got there, already it was getting crowded. I think it was just after you guys had actually left. Um, I knew the crowds were nine out of ten. So we kind of decided it would be a day that we did things we either had never done or we hadn't done in a really long time. Um, So first one, with your recommendation, we walked over to the firehouse, got our cards, uh, and all set up for for Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom and decided we would spend a lot of time playing that. Uh, Kids love doing it. We... um, I, I wish I had listened to this episode before we went and used your uh, Amazon trick and pre-purchased a little uh, little binder for the cards because, of course, we walked right into the Emporium and, and bought their $30 uh, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom specific binder with the strap, and kids just had to have it. So put all our cards in there, and we did. We were directed to start um, over in Fantasyland. So we went there, we did all of those, we did all the ones along Main Street, Um, we had some fast passes for Jungle Cruise, uh, Haunted Mansion, and surprisingly enough, um, Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I I can't remember the last time we rode that, Uh, in fact, when I told Kaylin that we had a Winnie the Pooh fast pass, she said, there's a Winnie the Pooh ride here? I was like, exactly, (laughs) that's why we're going on it, we haven't done it in forever. Um... I guess I mean obviously you know nothing's ever going to beat Mr. Toad, but I think they did a really really good job with that space and that ride, um, and it, it's a lot better than I ever remembered. Like to me, and this will be like blasphemy. I would almost prefer to go on the Winnie the Pooh ride than the Peter Pan one. Um, other than the ride system for Peter Pan, when you're you know you're hanging, is just a little bit cool, and you're looking down on everything. We all really enjoyed Winnie the Pooh. We were so surprised about it. And it's kind of like a, a dark ride. You know, it's all about the I mean, there's the storm and there, the dream. And I mean, it's it's it was much better than we remembered. Um, and, yeah, there's and, two things I love about that ride. I love what the Tigger when the vehicle bounces. Yes. Yeah. And then I do love when you go into the room with the storm of just the effects of the droplets of water. Oh, it's so good. Did yeah. you say? Yeah. Yeah, and then it's got, like, obviously we had Fast Pass, but it does have an interactive line queue, so if you are waiting, um, you know, and it's so, because everybody kind of look, everybody who's in the standby queue looks at the Fast Pass queue kind of like, you guys use the Fast Pass for Winnie the Pooh? Like, everybody looks surprised. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny, but but again, we just, we know we hadn't done it in forever. I thought, well, let's go ahead and do it. Um, so, so we had done those rides, and then we decided we would do things like PhilharMagic, which we hadn't done in a long time, um, probably in over a year. And it's it's one of those, as I'm walking in, I just vaguely remember it, and I think, man, I really wish they would do something else with this and refurb it or bring a new show in. And then after the show, I'm like, you know, that's actually really, really good. I mean, it's a great show. It involves so many of the Disney animated classics. Uh, When this entire screen opens up and you basically have a 180 degree screen all in 3D. um, Again, it's just one of those that I think is overlooked so often. Uh, And then we also did Country Bear Jamboree, which um, I, I probably had been over a year since we saw that. Uh, which is obviously very classic Disney. Um, I'd only like to see it maybe get a refurb for the simple fact that we know the animatronics are so much better now. And throughout the entire show, those animatronics of the moose and the deer and uh, was it a buffalo up on the wall, you can hear very loudly every time their eyes blink because those things are so old and outdated. Um, and, And that was another, like we walked out of there and Kalen was like, you know, I don't really remember that. Um, it was a little more creepy than I thought it would be, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so, you know, those were the things we did. And then even though it was slam packed, um, we did our three fast passes and it was, I think we ended our third fast pass around two. I tr- immediately picked up a barnstormer and we rode that immediately picked up small world. We rode that and then immediately picked up a pirate's fast pass. Um, and the only reason we didn't ride that is because I booked, a stay at the dolphin while we were on small world and it was already getting a little bit later and we wanted to get to the hotel. So, um, 
even on a nine out of 10 day, if you're not pressed to do, you know, the e-ticket attractions, um, and it's just a day that you can kind of fly a little bit by the seat of your pants, you know, I go to the, you're never going to wait or not get into Philhar magic. You're never going to wait or not get into country bear. Um, that we, we, we sat and got a great spot right on main street and watched the parade. You know, which again, we hadn't stuck around and watched in a long time. Um, so it was kind of neat. It was that we were calling it like, you know, just a hadn't done in forever day. You know, the, the things that we usually overlook and we pass by, we said, we're just going to do them and had one of the best days at Magic Kingdom um, we've had in a really long time. And then again, we got to a point, I think we were having so much fun was when Rhonda just looked at me and said, I wonder if we could stay here tonight. And we found the dolphin. Um so we, we got over to the Dolphin, uh, checked in, ran up to our room. It was about 6.30, and uh, we decided we would walk down into Epcot. It was going to close at 8. Um, we thought we could have an hour and a half there. Uh, we made our rounds through the country, uh, tried probably half a dozen dishes uh, we had not tried previously from Festival of the Arts. Um, big standout was over in Morocco. They had a hummus uh, trifle. Uh, yeah, which was insane. I mean, it was so, so good. Just layers of hummus, layers of like spiced ground beef. Uh, I, I don't even remember what else was on top of it, but I mean, we loved it. Lacey absolutely loved it. She was dipping the pita chips in it and eating the meat and the, the hummus and everything. Um, we tried a couple different drinks. We were, we were sticking to wine that night. So we had some different wines, uh, some white wines at the different countries and then right outside of um, Mexico there, uh, by the time we were there, it was, it was just before 8 o'clock. Um, so we had a great spot to watch Illuminations. Um, and that was another thing this trip. Like, you know, I hadn't seen Illuminations in a really long time. And in my mind, I remember it not being that great. And then we watch it and I'm like, you know, what? that's actually really good. Like, I kind of see why a lot of people love it. Now, it's no you know, wishes or happily ever after, but it was one of those things that we hadn't done so long. I kind of just forgot about it and always brushed it off. Um, and so we, yeah, we really enjoyed it. And then we, uh, we walked back on the boardwalk. Um, we checked out some of the magicians that were, were going on there. Uh, kids played some of the like carnival boardwalk games. Uh, they won some stuffed animals and then we got back to the room probably nine ish. And since we had just really, we never ate a full meal at Magic Kingdom. Like we had Dole Whips, we did the mobile order, uh, we had some ice cream and all, and then we just kind of snacked around Festival of the Arts. So I had the bright idea to order room service, uh, which which adds up very very quick when it's 9:30 at night and you have uh, had a couple of glasses of wine going around the world. Um, <laughs> so by the time the lady the the lady comes up to bring the room service, Lacey's passed out. She was like the driving factor because she wanted pizza. So she's asleep. Uh, Rhonda's half asleep. Uh, Kaylin and I are the only ones that are awake. So, we, you know, we plowed through about as much food as we could, and we ended up bringing over half a pizza uh, back home with us. But um, that's that's one that kind of added up quick. And then, uh, yeah, the next morning, um, the while well, the kids were kind of still sleeping a little bit, Rhonda and I headed down and walked the property and, and took a look at the pool area. Um looked at the lobby a little bit more and uh i mean we just we kind of fell in love with that resort you know and and you guys had had talked so great about the swan when you stayed there um so we ended up we got home and immediately uh canceled our art of animation reservation in may and we booked two nights at the dolphin uh for mother's day weekend instead um and the only downside i would say to it is that they it's full beds you know you get two full beds in there as opposed to queens which was very surprising to me because they just refurbed all of those rooms when they did the lobby, correct? So, yeah. So what happens is, so the Swan, you get two queens. Yeah. And it is usually priced a little bit higher. Correct. So okay. even so for, um, so somebody who might be a, a Starwood member or a Marriott member, right? Because you can transfer your points to both. Yeah. So for Starwood, the Dolphin is typically ten thousand points a night. Okay. The Swan's twelve thousand. Okay. Um, and the um, if you're paying cash, you know you're, you know if you found 
Dolphin for 179, then Swan's probably going to be about 199. Yeah. It, you know, yep. it's going to be anywhere from that, you know, 20 to $40 more to stay at the Swan. Um, I think the rooms are both great. The, with the wet, with Star, with the beds and pillows are extremely comfortable. Yes. Um, yeah, the yeah, rooms are I mean, huge. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah, giant. You, you, yep. And, and no. what I, I mean, what I love is, I mean, again, you know, obviously the swan would fall certainly to me under a deluxe category if it was Disney owned. The only thing that technically would almost make you say that the dolphin wasn't deluxe is the fact that it's double beds. But I mean, you know, location wise, um, amenity wise, you know, uh, how big the rooms are. I mean, this is a deluxe resort. So when I looked for Mother's Day, I ended up booking through Priceline um, because it was uh, a cheaper deal than going direct, um, you know, through the Dolphin uh, on their website. Um, We were looking at a difference even after the resort fees. I think the Dolphin for the two nights was only nine dollars more for the entire weekend than it would have been staying in the Little Mermaid room at Art of Animation. Um so to me, that was a no-brainer. Now, we'll have the additional cost of parking once we get there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to have that that location right there on the boardwalk, you know, your proximity to Epcot, to Hollywood Studios, to, you know, entertainment right there and all the restaurants, it's th- this is one that will go on our list um, to look at, I think, much more often. And then the only thing, and, and you let us know this, the only downfall is with us booking through Priceline to save some money, we're not going to earn, you know, those points um, to eventually maybe add up and, and get us some sort of, you know, uh, maybe a night stay or something in the future. So I may look next time we book to go ahead and just go directly through them so that we can earn points, because in the long run, Getting, you know, the potential for maybe a free weekend or even a free night stay could be a better cost savings than saving the money that we do through Priceline, you know? Yeah, so I think that's one thing. The other thing is, right, if you see that deal um, on Priceline, maybe it doesn't hurt to call, you know, especially. Oh, yeah. um, You know, just call them and just say, hey, you know, I'm. I'm a Starwood member. I'm just, I'm getting going. You, you know, as you see, I don't have any nights, but, um, you know, I'd like to book direct through you. Um, and this is a, a deal I can get outside. Will you match it? Okay. Well, we'll um, definitely try that. And, and if it works great, if not, oh, well, you know that you have the price line, right. but at least if you go through them, because there's other stuff. And again, and again, that I look at, it's like when I stay at the dolphin the last time, um, you know, what, what status I have with Starwood, I re- also received, um, you know, uh, I've received coupons towards breakfast. I received a, um, drink vouchers. Yeah. So, you know, I was with my son, it was just he and I. And so we, when we had dinner, we turned them in at the end of dinner for like milkshakes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so and some stuff, perks. but I, or I could have turned it in for you know a bar drink or whatever it might be. Right. Um, Starwood, the top or top tiers of Starwood right now, they're running a special too, that if you purchase points from them, you get a thirty five percent bonus. Okay. Um, so that could really save on a trip if you are a Starwood member to just you know. I was. I saw somebody had posted online today where they had already were staying there, and for a week stay for whatever room it was about eighteen hundred bucks. Oh wow! So they canceled it, bought the points, and for Dolphin again you need seventy thousand points or whatever, but it came out to be about thirteen hundred bucks. Man! So I save five hundred bucks for the week. That's huge. By just purchasing starwood points because of the special so different places do that i got an email today from southwest airlines right that um i'll get you know if i buy miles i'll get a 50 percent bonus on miles okay. so if you join some of these especially if you're a person that you need a flight or you need a car or you need you know certain hotel stays join these programs because there could be periods of times that they 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 might run specials for everybody not just for you know, higher tiers, and it might make sense to take advantage of some of those things. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah, we yeah we may have to do an entire uh, separate episode on exactly what you're just talking about and have you run through all of these different deals and ways to look around it because that yeah, that could be an incredible savings. Um, I, I've got a yeah. We'll have to talk more about that too for for some of our upcoming trips. So what'll be uh, so what'll be interesting? I guess our next uh, our next real big trips for both of us will both be Disney related. Um, however, I will be at Disney World with half of the United States, and you will be on a Disney cruise line for spring break. So I feel I got the raw end of this deal. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be with however many the boat has, but um, I will be able to have plenty. I was just looking at it, so to give you some previews, Michelle and I have an adult-only dinner scheduled one night at Remy on the Disney Dream. Um, which is an additional upcharge. I think it's an extra 85 or 90 bucks um, a person, but it's the ship's equivalent of almost a Victoria and Alberts. Oh, awesome. um, and then um, we have some a couple's massage scheduled. So knowing that the kids, the kids are going to spend all their time in that kids club and Star Wars and, and playing, that's all they keep talking about lately. Um, we will ha- be able to have plenty of uh, adult time and know that they're well taken care of and having a blast. Very nice. Well, not not to make you too jealous, but I did get a reservation for uh, five adults and five children during um, spring break at 50s Primetime Cafe. So there's always, nice. there's always that. Yeah, I'll be uh, hobnobbing with the rich folk there, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think it's... It's so like our spring break never lines up with anybody in the North spring break. I don't know what happened this year. So again, the whole reason we're going that week is my brother uh, is coming with his three kids, uh, my parents, and of course the four of us. And our spring break is the exact same week as Maryland's. And I believe also New Jersey's and maybe New York's. So we know everyone is coming. I mean, crowd calendars are already 10 out of 10 every single day. Um, so uh, we're just gonna we're gonna make the best of it, but um, it'll it'll be interesting. There'll be ten of us uh, hauling around the park for. We're gonna be there five days. We're doing parks for three days. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I will probably take some recording equipment just to have all the all the fun fresh in my mind. But um, uh, as always, everyone, thank you so much for listening. And if you get a chance and you subscribe to our show on iTunes, go out there and leave us a rating and review. Well, that's all we got for now. We'll see you real soon.